Alright, what's going on, Forgotten Nation? I'm your host, Tef G, and welcome back to some more Runner 3. Last time we had the revelation that turns out there's not just two hero quests, but three hero quests. And with that in mind, we actually have two more objects to find, upon which we will give them to the respected hero quest owners, achieve what we get as a new character in mind, we're gonna watch a puppet show, and finally take on the parliaments of Owl's boss of Spooky Lands. So we actually have quite a bit to do in this episode. With that in mind, we're gonna go straight into the levels. Which actually I went a little too far. Let's see, the next stage is this one. And disappointingly, the words all spell beat. It wouldn't be cool if it was a cameo to the Bitrip series going beat, core, void, but it is what you get. With that in mind though, we definitely do have our uh it's a lot of work that we had to achieve in uh, 20 minutes or maybe even less. Why 20 minutes? Because I don't like my videos to exceed over 30. That's too much for one viewing day. Plus, it's just a thing. It's got to go above 10, but it's got to be less than 30. So let's just try to find the letters, and then we're going to continue forward. Alright, so what we got? This was the, the carnival level. So, if I were letters spelling out a cameo to the first game, but which may not be, because there's no other two games. Now the way Runner 2 did it, I'm thinking it may have to be the later half, possibly the gem route. So, hmm, yeah, let's stick this way. Alright, nothing too bad. Schlurks can. Alright. Whoa. Alright, stick to the high route. Keeping my eyes open. We're not gonna take the checkpoint because I don't know if it's in the first half or the second half. It looks like it wants us to favor over here. It may actually be down there. I'll have to wait and find out. Uh, let's stick to this route. Oh, that was scary. And yeah, maybe back there, actually. Oh, wait, there was something down there. Okay, there was something down there. So it's definitely the gold route, but it was down low. So we have to intercept that route. See, I wish it was a little more obvious when you could know when to switch routes. It doesn't really tell you when to switch. And then when you're going for the gold or the gems, it makes you switch automatically. So it kind of destroys the whole purpose of trying to find these extra little areas. Especially when the game design doesn't really point out where it's happening. So it's just a, a furthering nitpick that kind of drives the experience to anger and frustration. Why go for the collectibles if the game doesn't tell you how to get the collectibles? Right, so I think we know where it is now. We just gotta be able to get it. Alright, moving forward. Stick with the gem route because it will help us avoid the hazards. Plus, it's actually a little faster. Alright, Schwartz can. Should be coming across a checkpoint very soon. There it is. We're going to hit it because it's the later half of the stage. And we want to make sure we stick to the gold route. we got to find a way to get... Oh, yeah. It's right there. Beat! It's even got the same colors of the Bitrip Runner series uh, cape. Alright. So wait for it. Alright. 
Alright. So, looks like we got one more then. Wait, is that it? That was it. Alright, so where are we gonna find these letters? Wait for it. Yeah, these loading screens are starting to get there. Alright. Uh, collectibles, I want to assume is... I want to say it's the gem rep, but it's been gold already. What's the one spot we haven't really discovered yet? Hmm. Slide right under. Kick him down. I feel like it's gonna be gold. Hmm. Because up there was the puppet, so therefore... Alright, merging paths. Don't hit the checkpoint just yet. Whoa, forgot about that. Uh, stick this way. Book. Lots of books. Uh, right, these are the gems. Um, ooh, I'm not even sure. Ah, it's this guy. I'm at a loss where this might be. Where is the beat? Oh no! Okay, okay, we're gonna take the other route this time, but I'm not seeing it just yet, so where could it be? Okay, I still can't get enough of this bookworm demon. It's just so weird. But where would the beat be? Hmm. Slide down. Alright, so we're taking a left this time. That's where the puppet was, so we'll stay low. Hmm. Uh, take the higher routes. Here now. Okay, emerging roads. Nothing between the two, so we're gonna take the checkpoint. Uh, yeah, let's stick to the gem route. Actually, there was something back there, wasn't it? Oh, wait, no, never mind. That's the beat. We got the beat. Alright, that's it. So there should be one more now. Because that make. Actually, no. Didn't we grab the first episode? Uh, let's just see. I think that actually might be it. Alright, let's just wait and find out. Because that means eight. No, that really is it. So. With that in mind, now we can finally cash in the collectibles and get some new characters. So let's start with Beck Hazelman's, because we gotta talk back to the wolf again. We're gonna take the gold route, because it's just after the checkpoint. I still find it baffling that there's actually three instead of two. This kind of messes up my whole playthrough, going for 100%. I won three episodes per thing, but now it turns out there's gonna be four for Foodland. It's just... It's those small things that really make you go, ah. Uh. But now I am curious what that actually, what the quest is going to be. Because at the time of this recording, I actually haven't done it yet.
Alright, just gotta make it to the end. That's all it takes. You know, now that I think about it, wasn't the octopus supposed to attack? Oh no, here it is. Yeah. Alright, just gotta make it through. That's all it takes. Alright, here comes the checkpoint. Doesn't matter if I hit it or not, I just gotta get under it. So now let's switch paths. Just like that. And let's cash in our goods. Alright, so we got the Hazelman. Oh, I'd recognize that briny sense anywhere. You found all the pies. Hand them over. As thanks for your help, we'd like to offer you this greatest non-cash non-pizza reward there is. Friendship. We won't tell you his name, but this strange ranger has been trying to sell us awful products for weeks now. It's like, yeah, it could be worse than milk brine, but does that mean we want to drink the stuff? Goodness gracious. Hopefully he's good as running as he is being weird. Good luck out there. Alright. Hey, we got Charles Martinet! <laughs> uh, you invite the narrator to the barbecue shindig at the outskirts of Foodland right after the title screen. Alright, I wasn't expecting him to be a locked here. I thought it was going to be Machine Land or something. But that's actually pretty fun. So, we got Charles Martinet. It's one of the weirdest things that... This is the man that voices Mario, by the way, but it's so strange to be able to play as him in a game. You'd never think to play as the narrator. But then, mind, that's one of the quests, so let's continue forward. Next, we have the. Doll Hollow. Yeah, the dolls. So, this is essentially just part of the gem route, so we just gotta stick with the stage. Once it loads, of course. Stretch my arms. Alright, here it comes. Three, two, one, let's go. Alright, so taking the gem routes. This is going to take us right to the quest. Alright, we're doing it. Keep going. Alright, this way yonder. Slide under, and here he comes. The Hero Quest Baby. Just as terrifying as ever. The deed is done, isn't it? My pal Zimbob just got asked if I wanted to get lox milkshakes with him. And this is after years of telling him he couldn't drink them because he was allergic to fish. Thank you so much for helping me. I'm a doll of my word, which is why I wrote this really great reference when my pal Frankenstein asked about you. He says he needs to train for something called the Schlortz Run, and wanted to know if he could join you. What do you think? Well, I'll leave you two to work out the details. Good luck out there. The Timble Tot has no idea what's coming for him. An abomination! We finally got Frank... Oh, I didn't know Charles Martinet said it. But anyways, we got Frankenstein... This is probably one of the creepier uh, characters to come out of Runner 3, if I'm being honest. But we invite him to the barbecue shindig, whether we like it or not. So let's continue forward, because that's it for this stage. We finally have our new friends. And now we take the third and unexpected hero path. Uh, the hero path, anyways. I still am baffled. There's three. I mean, it makes sense. This is Runner 3, after all. Three's plastered everywhere, but it just seems so un... You'd never guess that there's a quest. Especially when some of these are so well hidden. Alright, so let's just keep going. 
And I've realized with my watermark, you actually don't see the loading screen on the bottom, which is really just Commander Video in his Hanna-Barbera style just running. It's a nice little jogging animation, but I never actually considered looking at the video feed itself to see that my, uh, my thing is hiding it behind. So I apologize for that, but don't worry, I'll get to see plenty of him when it comes to the uh, retro stages. Alright, so we just gotta get to the checkpoint and then switch lanes. Which I wish would be a little more predictable. Again, it's kind of like driving a car. You don't just drive down a road, you see signs. Signs that tell you where to go. So shouldn't there be the same thing here to tell me where to go for these different paths? I don't know. It could be just me nitpicking, but I feel like it should be a little more obvious where these hero routes take place. Especially when it's so uncanny as to where they are to begin with. Because the map screen really doesn't do much justice where these guys are. Especially when the one guy from Foodland looks like Hello Neighbors is just shoving his face deep full of shit. Not actual shit, I'm just talking about food, of course. Alright, so now we gotta cross into the middle lane. Just like that, let's go forward. And we have Mr. Sock Puppet Dude. A colonel of sorts. These words you have found me, oh my, they're better than money could buy. I was tired before, but I'm inspired once more. I'm so happy I could just die. Oh my goodness. My Limerick skills are resurrected. You're here just as I suspected. Are you ready to hear the Limerick of the Year using all the words you've collected? Hold on to your butt. <laughs> the Limerking Lamprey, that's me. I write perfect limericks, you'll see. Receive help? Why never? I'm simply too clever to need such a thing, yes siree. I'm an image to maintain, understand? If they find you helped, I'll be banned. They prefer not to cheat, but if I am beat, I will damage my personal brand. Your kindness has left me quite floored. As such, you deserve a reward. I took out some loans and sold my bones, and only then I could afford. You unlocked. Eddie Riggs. Okay, so for those that don't know, this is actually a cameo to another video game, but I've actually never played it myself, so I can't say I know where Eddie Riggs comes from. But for what it is, it seems like it's a pretty popular game nonetheless. I may check it out in my free time, but as it stands, I don't really know who Eddie Riggs is besides the fact that he's a popular character. Then mind though, we have finally cashed in all the hero quests, and now it's time for a puppet show! Ha ha ha! Uh... Let's find out if we get to learn more about what's going on here in Spooky Land and why Commander Video has continued his journey here. So, let's take a look at what it has to offer. Sometimes, when the weather conditions are just right, you can see Glorms towering above the Spooky Land sign. He's been there as long as anyone can remember, coming down but once a year to partake in the only holiday celebrated in Spooky Land, Arbor Day. Gorms is what they called him, because that was his name. They could have called him John or Jim, but that would have been lame. A private being, Glorns rarely made an attempt to communicate with his subjects. Indeed, those who had spoken to him could be counted on the hands of the rare two-fingered nematode. The universe was filled with worlds ruled by oppressive dictators, but Spooky Land was different. It was more freer. This is how it had always been, and is how the inhabitants of Spooky Land like it. Names can be deceiving, Spooky Land was a great place. They validated marking and their healthcare plans were ice. But all I fear was not well in Spooky Land. After eons of peaceful living, the world's inhabitants now found themselves in grave danger. The home they loved so dearly had suddenly and viciously become for the birds. Sent by the Timbletot, they arrived in the dead of night, cooling their diabolical threats at anyone who dared look at them. They called themselves 
the Parliament of Owls. And they informed the inhabitants of Spookyland that Glorns had surrendered all power to them. All hope, it seemed, was lost until the commanders arrived. The Owls were defeated and forcibly dethroned. They then promptly retreated because they had been owned. The commanders made quick work of the Parliament of Owls, freeing the imprisoned Glorns from his rusty shackles. Grateful to be a free man once again, the corners of Glorn's lips inverted ever so slightly into a smile, so subtle that some would say it wasn't there at all. <laughs> Spooky land saved and so's the day, so now we bid adieu. The curse has shall him hip hooray, Alright, that was interesting to say the least. It almost felt kind of pointless, though. I mean, sure, it sticks to the idea that we go to each island, we stop Timbal Todd, and that's that, but... I don't know how I felt about that one. And then there was the singing again. It made sense for, uh, Foodland, but... I don't know what to describe it as. I guess it's like a German thing, uh... I can't think of the words for it. But it made sense there to have him sing, but to sing here again felt out of place. I don't know how I felt that one. That was a mixed bag, to be honest. It was kind of... It didn't really add much to it. It just felt like, okay, Timble Tot's there, here comes Commander Video, that's the end of that. I... I don't know. Maybe it's because Cheeseburger wasn't there, but... I don't know. This just felt like a side story, as it should be. And in some ways, I guess there is nothing wrong with that. The whole game itself is a side story. It's canon, but it's not canon. It doesn't really happen, but it's still there. I don't know what to think about it, but for what it is, that was that. With that in mind, we're finally ready for the boss fight. We have the... Parliament of Owls. So if I had to take it, this is definitely a boss fight that takes place in the courtroom, so we have to watch out for their giant mallets that we saw in the trailer. But how to actually kill these things? I don't know. Let's find out. Three, two, one. The fat lo <laughs> the fat lords. Oh. Hmm. Okay, so the mail doesn't look like it's actually killing me, but obstructing my view, maybe? Or it's causing stuff to spawn. Oh no, it's Okay, so it's after a set piece, I guess. So really we just gotta avoid what's coming in front of us. Okay, so it feels like a classic bit trip boss. Okay, and then we get the sign, so therefore we have to kick this next mallet. We just gotta get close enough. Yeah, there we go. That wasn't too bad. Uh, that's where it's going. This feels like it's gonna be a pretty short boss, actually. Okay, so don't jump on that one, but we can't smash it either. So how to get past it, then? We have to jump over it? Ah, oh, I was distracted. Alright. So, it's how to get past this last mallet. Okay, that's a scary bird. They always said to be afraid of the law. Uh. Okay. No, 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 says the bird. Alright, so we gotta be careful. Hmm, I still don't know how we're gonna approach the, uh, the mallet. Maybe we jump on the book, jump over the mallet, and then next time... Okay, so we do have to jump over the mallet. I suppose. Felt like the only thing that made sense. Ah, flying eyeballs. Alright, so we gotta watch out. Wait! Oh, we have to slam the book. That's it. Okay, I can tell because of the way that the book looked. 
Something a little bit slight, but it is still there to say the least. But I suppose that only works if you actually know how to initiate those rockets. I guess you learn after a couple of times like I did, but for those that are playing this for the first time, that might be a little... So we just gotta slam it down. Yeah, there we go. Alright, that's the boss. That was actually pretty short though, so command this villain. I don't know, some of that felt very short compared to what they offered in Foodland. I'm speechless. Then by that's the end of Spooky Land. So there's only one more world left with the game, and that is Machine Land. But that's not to say we're done yet, because once we finish Machine Land, there is still the game in a game. There is the retro stages. And then we may take a look at the challenge stages, but there's no word on completing them. I'm gonna try, but there no there's no guarantees. But then mind, that is it for this episode of Runner 3. So thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know, so far it's a mixed bag. Food Land was great, I'm debating Spooky Land, so Machine Land's gonna be the deal breaker. Is Runner 3 as good as it should be? We can only find out what this final world the game has to offer. With that in mind, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. We're approaching the end of the main campaign.